Hi, Mr. Sapone here, and today we're going to look at emission spectra and the Bohr-Rydberg equation. And we call that as atoms are excited, electrons jump up to higher energy levels. Those electrons are unstable there, so they drop back down, and in doing so, they emit photons of light. Sometimes it's visible, sometimes it's not. Um, and we know that when we pass white light through a prism, or say an incandescent light bulb through a prism, we get a continuous spectrum of light, all the colors of the rainbow. When we take hydrogen gas and do the same with that, uh, say we, electri uh, we put hydrogen gas in a glass tube and we conduct it to a battery, apply voltage across it, and we pass it through a prism or a diffraction grating, we get four discrete lines and one of them is really hard to see. But um, um, and these are called, this is called a continuous spectrum, this is called a line spectrum, it's discrete. So we're going to use the Rydberg equation, based off of the Bohr model of the atom, to calculate the wavelength of these lines, based on electron transitions. So right over here we have, say this is a hydrogen atom, this is energy level 1, energy level 2, energy level 3, 4, 5, 6, and we know that electrons are going to jump up and down energy levels. In the ground state, the electron would be right here, and the first energy level. As an hydrogen atom becomes excited, the electron is going to jump up, maybe to energy level 2, maybe to energy level 4. You know, And it's going to drop back down. It may drop down from 4 to 3, it may drop down from 4 to 2, or from 4 to 1. Each jump each different jump is going to correspond to a different energy of light. So what we want to do is we want to calculate the, we want to figure out the wavelength and figure out what type of light when an electron jumps from energy level 3 to energy level 2. When an electron jumps from energy level 4 to energy level 2, this would be 4 to 2, and so on and so on and so on. The problem's there. So we're trying to figure out what type of light is being created when electrons do this for a hydrogen atom. And this is what Bohr's uh, big claim to fame. He, we did this for the hydrogen atom. Bohr, the Bohr model of the atom, it was a good step forward in our atomic history, but it only really works for the hydrogen atom. Once we get to uh, atoms or systems with more than one electron, the math becomes way too complex. This doesn't work anymore. So they actually use supercomputers to do this, but it does work for hydrogen in this equation. So let's just read the question and see what we have to do. Calculate the wavelength of light emitted by a hydrogen atom. For the cases below, these are the cases where an electron is dropping down to a lower energy level and emitting a photon. It says to convert all wavelengths into nanometers. Okay, so we got to convert them to nanometers. If we don't remember, a nanometer is 10 to the negative ninth meters, a billionth of a meter, nanometer. Indicate where it falls in the electromagnetic spectrum. So I want to know if it's red light, blue light, green light. Is it ultraviolet light? Is it infrared light? So you're going to have to consult and electromagnetic spectrum when you get your answer answer and see where that wavelength of light falls on the spectrum. So the main thing is calculating the wavelength. Uh, and we're going to draw a visual depiction of the cases mirroring the pattern of the image on the right. What I simply want is for case one, an electron is jumping from three to two. So you draw an electron, three to two. It's emitting light. If this is red light, make that red or write red. If it's UV, write UV. So we're going to model that for each case when we're done. Uh, finally, I want you to use Planck's formula to calculate the energy of the photon after finding lambda in joules and electron volts. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take this case. We're going to be working with this one. and I'm going to go through this whole problem from start to finish to show you how to do it. An electron jumps from 3 to 2. And this right here, this lambda, the Greek letter lambda, is the wavelength of light in meters. This is actually what we want to solve for. R just the Rydberg constant. It's always the same number. You could actually plug this number in for that R right now and keep it there. That's always the same number. Uh, NF2 is the final energy level and NI is the initial energy level. So we're starting from 3, that's the initial energy level in this case, and we're dropping to 2. So you really have 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 3 squared multiplied by the Rydberg constant and that equals 1 over lambda. You just kind of got to rearrange this algebraically to solve for lambda. Once you get lambda, once you know your lambda, well, to figure out the energy in joules, we're going to use this equation over here. Energy equals hc over lambda. H is the Planck constant. This is a constant, always the same number. 
So you're putting this number in for h. The speed of light is also a constant value, which we rounded a little bit. Uh, 3 times 10 to the 8th, that's going to go here, and your wavelength value goes here. So all you're really doing is multiplying two numbers together, dividing by another one. And that'll give you an answer in joules for the energy of that wavelength. Once you do that, you're going to convert that into electron volts using this ratio. Well, one joule is 6.242 times 10 to the 18th electron volt. So that's a simple conversion factor. And let's go ahead and do this. So an electron is jumping from energy level 3 to energy level 2. What are we doing? We know that the final energy level is 2, the initial is 3, and we know that our R value in this equation is constant. This R is constant. Um, so what we did here is we plugged in all our values. 1 over lambda equals R, the constant value, and I left the unit out, it's over meter. Um, and 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and all you got to do is solve for lambda now. This is like an x, solve for x. 1 over 4 minus 1 over 9 times this big number equals 1 over lambda. And it just so happens that 1 over 4 minus 1 over 9 is 0.139. And multiply it by this number, you end up with 1,523,612.33. And meters to the minus 1, what does that mean? Well, x to the negative 1, if you don't remember from math class, is equal to 1 over x. So all this means is meter is in the denominator as a unit. It's meter to minus one, meaning it's not uh, 1,500,000 meters. It's 1,500,000 per meter, over a meter. Meter is in the, the bottom of this equation. So, And now all you got to do is solve for lambda. Mul you just cross multiply. Multiply this side by that and bring that over. And lambda equals one over that number. Turns out that lambda is 6.56 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. So that is the wavelength of light. Just by plugging in the 2 and the 3 and using the Rydberg constant, we were able to figure out the lambda of light. And that's in meters. We want it in nanometers. Remember, nano is 10 to the negative 9th. So this decimal right now is moving left 7 places. It's a negative number, really small number. I want this decimal to have to move left 9 places. So I'm going to move it over to and make that to the negative ninth. So this is gonna be 656 nanometers or 656 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. What I did was I moved this decimal over two more places and I know it originally had to go this way seven times because it was a negative seven, it's a very small number. So I wanted to have to go over nine places. So I just moved it over two extra places. So this is 656 nanometers and if we were to look this up on an electromagnetic chart, that should be in the red portion of the spectrum. Remember, the, it goes from about 380 on the violet side to 700 on the red side. And so this 656 is very close to the red, red portion of the spectrum. Uh, it's further than the orange, it's in the red portion. So how would I visually draw this? Well, we have an electron dropping from energy level 3 to energy level 2, and it's emitting a photon of red light. Um, our next step is to calculate the energy of this photon of light. And we're going to use this formula. Energy equals hg over lambda. And we have two constants here. Uh, this is the Planck's constant. This is the speed of light. There down here, these numbers are not changing in any case. And all you're doing is multiplying this really small number, 10 to the negative 34th, times this larger number, times 10 to the 8th, um, divided by, again, a small number, 6.56. And this has to be in meters, not nanometers. When you do this, don't mix that up because this unit's in meters, this unit's in meters. When we work with visible light, we like the units nanometers. So that's the only reason I had you convert it. But when you're working with this formula, keep your answer in meters. Otherwise, you're going to be off by two decimals. Um, so once you do that, once you multiply this out, you get an answer. 3.027 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Seems like a very small number, but that's the energy of one photon as it drops from n equals 3 to n equals 2 for a hydrogen atom. And to convert that into electron volts, well, the unit we're starting with is the unit we want to get rid of. 
So we set up a conversion factor. Start with what you're converting, um, put the same unit down here so you can cancel it. And what's your conversion factor? Well, one joule, one joule equals 6.242 times 10 to the 18th EVs. And when you multiply these two numbers together, you end up with 1.89 electron volts. And that's all you have to do to solve this. We are simply kind of creating one of these for the hydrogen atom. This is the hydrogen atom. This kind of gives away some of what you're doing. But um, you're going to sometimes get ultraviolet light depending on where the electron is dropping down. Sometimes you're going to get infrared. You could actually use this as a little bit of a check for your own work. We just want to actually use the Bohr-Rydberg equation to calculate these things. Uh, good luck. Hopefully this helps. Mr. Spohn.